All right, uh, welcome back. Let's bring in uh, Congressman Kevin McCarthy. He's the House Minority Leader. He joins us from Statuary Hall. Uh, Mr. Leary, good morning to good you. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Got a, a question for you. Uh, earlier, we were talking about the uh, census showdown. You know, the Supreme Court came out and said that uh, the argument that the administration made was incorrect. And I was quoting the Attorney General, Mr. Barr, yesterday, uh, and I think this got confused by somebody. Uh, yeah. He, Mr. Barr, agrees with the president. The Supreme Court decision was wrong, and Mr. Barr sees a way to get the question on the census. How important is it, for your point of view, to do that? Well, it's not just my point of view, but you got to think of it as Americans as a whole. You only do this once every 10 years. It's been on the form, especially the long form, up until President Obama took it off. So it is the one time you can ask the question and see who is in this country and ask all the different questions. You can't go do this next year or the other. That's why it's so critical to get this done now, because they are, gonna, they are printing it as we speak. And so from that perspective, the Supreme Court did not say you could not do it, um, and the president has the right right to do it, and I'm, I'm very interested in seeing what the Attorney General is able to say in the next day or two, because the time is critical. Well, Mr. Colleague, uh, Mr. Leader, your colleague <laughs> on the other, I, I mixed up my words, your Whoops, colleague yes. on the other side of the aisle, the Speaker of the House, says, no, the reason the President wants to do this is to make America white again. Uh, that is so untrue. Just look at what this president's been able to achieve for all Americans through this economy. There's more African Americans working, more Hispanics and others. The, the president is focused on all of America, and I think that's really the instance of why he's looking at this as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, Biden, uh, Bernie Sanders, Judge Buttigieg, I mean, uh, Mayor Buttigieg, Mayor and Beto O'Rourke have all said that they want the minimum wage to be raised to $15 an hour. But there was a CBO report that just came out on the effects of increasing the minimum wage and it says there is about a two-thirds chance that the change in employment would lie between about zero and a reduction of 3.7 million workers so a lot of people would be laid off because small businesses cannot afford this what's your reaction well, not only are the Democrats trying to overturn the 2016 election, they're trying to overturn all this economic gain we have been able to achieve. Think of for one moment. We are at our strongest economy we've been in the last 50 years, and this Democratic Party is no longer the Democratic Party. This is the Socialist Democratic Party. The Congressional Budget Office just analyzed this, and this is what they're coming together. They've been trying to do this for quite some time, to raise the minimum wage that can lose up to almost 4 million jobs mm -hmm. in America. Why would we want to do that? Don't we want to make sure small businesses are able to grow? I started my first small business when I was 20 years old. Three things I've learned. I was the first to work, I was the last to leave, and I was the last to be paid. But I was bringing new jobs up. We want to have that opportunity. We want to make America continue to grow that way. But the Democrats continue to move towards this socialism that is going to destroy this country. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, uh, Speaker Pelosi has made it clear in that uh, op-ed with... Um, Marine Dowd a couple of days ago that she's trying to keep the party center left. And then you've got uh, all of these freshmen, uh, very progressive members, uh, four in particular. It looks like there's some tension on the other side of the aisle. It's not tension. It's chaos in the caucus. These Democrats, if you watch them, and they're no longer Democrats, and we should stop calling them that because they don't even call themselves Democrats. They call themselves Socialist Democrats, and look at what the policies they're offering. This whole debate in the next presidential election is going to be about control versus freedom, socialism versus freedom. Before we left before the 4th of July, you watched a vote in the Senate about the border supplemental, the funding for the kids. 84 to 8. Every single Democrat in leadership on the Senate side voted for it. But when it came over here, Nancy Pelosi continues to appease the socialists. She wouldn't even, she tried to fight it the entire time. They're fighting now as they go forward. They have a real chaos inside their whole caucus. Mm. And they've got one, one more member because Eric Swalwell just dropped out, so he'll be back in the House. <laughs> <laughs> and between Eric Swalwell and who's the other one, Miriam, uh, th those were the two people I think the Republicans I heard from wanted to actually give them money to keep them on stage. <laughs> <laughs> What's your prediction for the Democratic Party? Do you think they'll split and there will be, there'll be two separate parties? Well, they're already split. I mean, the socialist wing of that party is continuing to grow. Think about this. Bernie Sanders probably has the best chance right now to become their nominee. 
And where did he go for his honeymoon back in the 80s? The Soviet Union. He was registered as a socialist. Remember that? And then you've got um, the, all those who are rising up and raising the most money, they come from the socialist wing of the party. Look at those four new members of the, Democratic, uh, of the Democrat Socialist Party here inside the House. They are the wing of the Democratic Party. They are the new movement of that party, which they call themselves socialist Democrats. Sure well, do. Go. All right. Good point. Kevin McCarthy, thank you very much for joining us today from Statuary Hall. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you.